In unveiling divine revelation, as articulated in the opening verses of the book of Revelation, Revelation 1, 1, 2, we are granted a glimpse into the spirit of prophecy. Delving into the profundity of this subject underscores its significance as exemplified in Revelation 12, 17, where a remnant is mentioned. Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines remnant as the residue or what remains after separation, removal, or destruction. Thus it becomes evident that a remnant does not encompass the entirety. This distinction is relevant because only a remnant possesses the testimony of Jesus, identified as the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19.10. Therefore, our pursuit of understanding this testimony becomes paramount. A pivotal observation emerges. This testimony belongs to Jesus himself. The revelation of Jesus Christ, bestowed upon him by God, unveils forthcoming events to his servants. This revelation was transmitted through his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, detailing all that he perceived, Revelation 1, 1, 2. What better source to glean insight into this testimony than from the one to whom it belongs? Comparing Revelation 12, 17 with Revelation 19, 10, we ascertain that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. But what constitutes the spirit of prophecy? Scripture provides clarity. In Revelation 19.10, as John attempted to worship the angel who disclosed these revelations to him, he was rebuked with the angel declaring himself as a fellow servant of John and his brethren who share the testimony of Jesus. Likewise, in Revelation 22.8.9, as John was again compelled to worship the angel, the same correction was issued emphasizing the angel's identity as a fellow servant of John and his brethren, the prophets. These parallels underscore the interconnectedness of these passages and elucidate the essence of the spirit of prophecy as embodied in Jesus' testimony. Thus we are urged to revere God alone, recognizing the sacredness of his testimony which permeates the spirit of prophecy. While this is not the end of the parallels in these passages, it is enough to illustrate the point. According to this, who are the brethren that have the testimony of Jesus? And what is the testimony of Jesus? Ah, there we have it. Those with the spirit of prophecy are called prophets. Praise the Lord for the word of truth. This particular title, Spirit of Prophecy, is fitting since it describes what the Spirit does through the prophets, that is, prophesy. Holy men of God spake as the Holy Ghost moved them. 2 Peter 1.21 Diverse perspectives abound concerning the origin and duration of the gift of the spirit of prophecy. Some assert it as a contemporary phenomenon within the church, while others believe prophetic voices ceased with the closing of the New Testament canon. Yet, to discern truth amidst these divergent views, we must turn to scripture, where clarity resides amid the maze of personal interpretations. Before delving into scripture, let's establish a definition for the term prophet. In Hebrew, the word for prophet is NBA, Nabi, signifying a spokesman, one who communicates on behalf of another through divine inspiration. This underscores that prophets serve as conduits for divine messages speaking with divine authority. Why does God require a spokesperson? One may inquire. Could not God communicate directly with each of us? This query finds its answer in the Genesis narrative. Initially, God communed personally with Adam in the Garden of Eden, yet after the fall, Humanity was severed from this direct communion. However, God's love for his people remains steadfast. Scripture attests to God's compassion as he sends messengers, the prophets, to guide his people back to righteousness. The prophetic lineage stretches back to the earliest days with figures like Enoch, Noah, and Abraham bearing witness to the spirit of prophecy. Even when the Lord sought to communicate more directly with his people, as in the time of Moses, they recoiled, preferring an intermediary. Could it be that the overwhelming holiness of God rendered his direct presence unbearable to sinful humanity? If so, are we any more capable of bearing his presence today? In light of humanity's fallen state, if God desires to impart a message to lead us from darkness to light, how would he convey it? The spirit of prophecy emerges as a beacon of hope, a divine conduit, through which God communicates his will and guidance to his people. As we navigate the complexities of our existence, let us remain attuned to the voice of the Spirit, recognizing it as a gift bestowed out of divine love and compassion. 
Examples from biblical history vividly illustrate the significance of the spirit of prophecy and its manifestation through living prophets. Some may assert that possessing the Bible equates to having the spirit of prophecy, but such a notion overlooks the distinctiveness highlighted in Revelation 12:17. Consider the era following Jacob and Joseph where prophets played pivotal roles in guiding Israel. Their absence resulted in spiritual decline and oppression under Pharaoh. However, the emergence of prophets like Moses brought deliverance, underscoring the profound impact of prophetic guidance on the fate of God's people. Examining the period of the judges offers further insight. Throughout this tumultuous time, the cycle of sin, bondage, repentance, and deliverance unfolded repeatedly. The spirit of prophecy was visibly active when God raised up judges like Othniel, Ehud, Deborah, and Gideon. Their leadership brought periods of prosperity and peace only to be followed by spiritual decline upon their passing. Similarly, after the judges, prophets continued to arise in critical moments. From Samuel's admonition to Saul to the prophecies of Zechariah and Haggai during the rebuilding of the temple, the spirit of prophecy guided and directed God's people. In each instance, the spirit of prophecy was unmistakably present when the Lord raised up a prophet, bringing divine guidance deliverance and prosperity. Conversely, its cessation coincided with the passing of the prophet, leading to spiritual decline and vulnerability. Thus, the spirit of prophecy transcends mere written words. It is the living testimony of Jesus conveyed through the Holy Ghost by a living prophet. To possess the spirit of prophecy is to embrace the ongoing revelation of God's will through his chosen messengers. The concept of progressive truth and sanctification underscores the ongoing revelation of God's will to humanity. As Proverbs 4.18 aptly describes, the path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day, signifying an ever-deepening understanding of divine truth. Scripture illuminates the purpose of prophetic gifts in the church, emphasizing their role in perfecting the saints, ministering to others, and building up the body of Christ until unity and faith is achieved. This journey of sanctification depicted as a transition from darkness to light is fueled by faith in the Word of God, which is transmitted through prophets. Faith, the conduit of sanctification, originates from hearing the Word of God delivered through prophetic revelation. This truth, articulated by the spirit of prophecy, works powerfully within believers, transforming them into the image of Christ. The righteousness of God rooted in his infallible truth, distinguishes his word from the fallibility of human utterance. Continual revelation, epitomized by the spirit of prophecy, ensures that believers possess present truth, a vital understanding of God's will for their time. A vital understanding of God's will for their time. This ongoing illumination guides individuals away from error and toward alignment with divine principles akin to the parable of the wise virgins who possess oil for their lamps, symbolizing spiritual preparedness. Recognizing the need to forsake human wisdom and embrace divine truth, individuals exchange their flawed righteousness for the perfection of Christ's righteousness. Through the active presence of the spirit of prophecy, believers are continually refined, shedding erroneous beliefs and embracing the ever-unfolding truth that leads to spiritual growth and conformity to God's will. In essence, embracing the spirit of prophecy ensures that individuals are not left to navigate their spiritual journey in darkness, but are guided by the illuminating light of divine revelation. Through this process, they exchange their flawed perceptions for God's unerring truth, leading to salvation and spiritual fulfillment. The passage you've presented emphasizes the importance of not relying on private interpretation when it comes to understanding the word of God. Instead, it underscores the necessity of heeding the sure word of prophecy and recognizing that interpretations belong to God. This perspective aligns with the biblical principle that prophecy is not a matter of human will or understanding, but originates from the Holy Spirit speaking through chosen vessels. Joseph's response in Genesis 48 exemplifies the acknowledgement that interpretations ultimately belong to God, highlighting the need for divine guidance in understanding prophetic messages. Similarly, the passage from Isaiah 41 underscores the vanity of human wisdom compared to the revelation of God's truth through prophecy. The conclusions drawn from these passages stress the significance of the spirit of prophecy in guiding believers, sanctifying them through truth and preserving them from error. The spirit of prophecy, 
identified as the testimony of Jesus by the Holy Spirit through living prophets, serves as a beacon of divine truth in a world plagued by darkness and deception. The spirit of prophecy is particularly significant as one of the defining characteristics of the remnant church, alongside the keeping of God's commandments. By adhering to Jesus' testimony, which is manifested through prophecy, believers are equipped to navigate the challenges of their time and remain faithful to God's will. Further, it underscores the central role of the spirit of prophecy in guiding and shaping the church's beliefs. Their insights serve as a testament to the enduring importance of prophetic revelation in understanding God's purposes and preparing for His coming kingdom. We have reached the end of this study. We hope you have gained something good for your soul and the renewing of your mind. Stay tuned and subscribe for more teachings like this.